So this amazing big tree out behind me here is called a bunya pine. Now I only just found out about these the other day because we met a woman walking in the park who had made her own nature table underneath one of them and she spread out some of the beautiful things that she'd found around the base of the pine. They're native to northern Australia and they're very very ancient. They have cones bigger than your head and they can weigh up to 10 kilos. We won't see one of those cones today because here when they fall on the ground they burst and for safety reasons the park gardeners shut off the area when they are falling on the ground because as you can imagine if one of those fell on you it could kill you. Let's go and have a closer look. I love the bark. It sort of reminds me of the skin on the leg of an elephant. I read about these when I googled them, and apparently some dinosaurs used to eat the cones whole, so they've had to have very tough teeth. Another thing I love about them, they've got a wicked defense system. Look at this. All these little leaflets are arranged on the Fibonacci principle. So there's a math lesson right here in every twig. It's also related to our kauri tree. Isn't that spectacular? They're really prickly too, so you wouldn't want to stand on one. As I said, I couldn't find the actual cones, but we found bits of them. So here are the leaflets that make up the cone. This must have been a smaller cone, but even so, there would have been quite a few. You can see the cavity here where the nut sits. And these are the nuts here, so they, they slot up in there. This one doesn't quite fit, but you can see the general idea. And then they're arranged around in a cone. So the cone would have been about that big. If we peel this away, you can see that this one still has a nut in it. Here we go. Now apparently these are also quite edible and really nutritious. When I read an online article it said that Aboriginal people used to gather from miles around to one particular place where they were um, frequently found, these bunya nuts, and they'd be feasting for many weeks until the whole supply was, um, was gone or stored up for future use. The rats love them too, many of them are hollow and have been chewed out by insects or by rats. So yesterday we were in the botanic gardens talking about the bunya pine and after that my research assistant and I had a think about an experiment that we would like to do. Um, if a cone fell even from the very lowest branches what the impact would be when it hit the ground because of course the cones themselves are very heavy and falling all that way, well, it would make quite a splat, wouldn't it? So we're going to do a simulated experiment today. We're going to get our crash test dummies out and we're going to go for the big one. So watch this space. So here we have three eager volunteers who have unwisely chosen to go to sleep underneath our simulated bunya pine which is three stories up at the top of the house. Now the one in the middle is looking quite smug because he's wearing a bicycle helmet. Whether that will make a difference to him remains to be seen. Now our bunya pine cone is represented by a heavy bag with uh, rice in it to the weight of 10 kilos. So that is pretty hefty. I can um, only just lift it with one hand. 10 kilos is quite a weight and when it falls of course from that big height it's going to be um, it's going to be maximised even further. 
So here's our innocent victim. He's uh, placed on about the spot where we've calculated the weight is going to fall. And if I back up a bit and look up toward the top of the house, you'll see that my research assistant there, Finn, is waiting with a glove on to make sure he doesn't get rope burn. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the pulley system at the top of the bunya pine tree that um, a strop has lashed it to the bed. We have a beam going out the window, my research assistant here, Finn. And then out here is a sort of cleat. Now Finn hauls the rope up on the cleat because we don't have a pulley. And yes, there is a little bit of friction when it comes down because of the rope, but probably not much more than if, um, if it was falling through the branches of a tree. So I think that's acceptable. And um, the bunya pine cone is dangling out over space, ready to fall. Okay. Go, Finn. When you're ready. Ooh. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Oh, that's got to hurt. So the scene of the carnage. Um, unfortunately, volunteer one didn't fare so well. His head is broken in three bits and it looks like brains are along the concrete, which is not so great. So we better tidy that up before we have um, before we do volunteer two. Could be a bit off putting otherwise. Okay, so this little guy's looking a lot more confident. He's um, he's got his PPE here. He's got his bike helmet. Now these bike helmets have saved people from a number of nasty brain injuries. So let's hope that he's as lucky. All right, so here he is underneath the bunya pine, and the cone is about to fall very shortly. I'll just back up a little bit because I don't want to be in the way having seen what happened to the last guy. Okay, Finn, let it go. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, that didn't sound good. Nope, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Now I'm just going to go, I'll have a look down. It's quite a long way down to the ground. Easy does it. Oh dear, we can see the little guy down there. Okay, so I'm going to look out the other window. Yeah, now you can see the, the pine cone up there. The victim down here. All right, when you're ready, Finn. Ooh, that didn't sound too good either. No, I think the moral of the story is do not sit under a bunya pine with or without a bicycle helmet.